Okay, so a classical in a classical Merkle tree, you have a bit string X you want to commit to, which you can think of as L concatenated blocks of substrings X1 to XL, and each one of size B. B is called the uh, security parameter. So the size of each block is B, so B times L will clearly be N. Um, you want, so the prover, the commitment scheme is that you want, one wants to commit to this bit string. And the way it works is that the prover having divided the string in this manner, maybe in his or her imagination, but anyways, it has these blocks. There is a random hash function that is shared between the prover and the verifier. And the way, um, the way the protocol starts is that the prover has these and picks a random hash function, which again, I emphasize both prover and verifier have this hash function. And this hash function applies on string of length 2B and outputs a string of length B, right? So for example, the hash function is applied on X1, X2 to give this H of X1, X2. So the prover picks this Merkle tree, takes an order. Order is important. Um, at least it'll eventually be very important. So it goes, suppose, from left to right and then layer by layer up. So for example, it starts by doing this hash function, then the second one, second block, et cetera, till the end of the first layer, and then does so at the second layer again. So now here are the values of the hash uh, from previous first two steps. And then the result here will be the hash of this string with this string. And it continues on till at the very end, there happens to be a string of length B and another, well, this should say Y of two, apologize, so Y of two. So another string of length B, and it applies the hash function to both of them, I guess H of Y1, Y2, at the very root of this Merkle tree, this is called the Merkle tree. And this root is called the commitment. So that's the commitment string. Once it obtains this commitment string, sends it to the verifier or store, sends it to the verifier. So verifier now has the commitment. And the hope is that this string will not be meddled with, will not change from this point on. So the whole goal is that this string is stored. You can imagine a ledger, like a blockchain protocol, or you can imagine um, that it's put on the cloud and the verifier um, wants to make sure that this does not get changed. Now, how can the verifier verify that this information is indeed intact and has not been meddled with? So verifier can do the following. It can pick, suppose randomly takes block two, picks block two, and wants to be convinced that the block two, you know, is the same as the block two of the previous, of the stored value. That is the prover has not since uh, changed it. And, emphasizing that the commitment is now with the um, verifier. Now, what Prover will do to convince the verifier that indeed X2 is correct is that the Prover will send X2 and its siblings, these bit values, as well as the all the ancestors with their siblings, all the way to the verifier. So it'll give this, it'll give uh, the bit strings you see in red and it sends up the verifier and the verifier will simply start the decommitment phase and starts applying the hash function here to make sure it gets h etc here and then has this value here so applies h again and goes all the way to make sure that at the very end it can confirm the value of the commitment bit string so it can confirm that the bit string it has in its own hand um, is the same as what was committed to. And if that's the case, it'll just accept. It'll say, all right, this is accepted. Um, the bit string was not meddled with, and I accept this protocol. 